Welcome. Today we're going to talk about systems of equations, specifically when you're given a test that has systems of equations when given multiple choice answers, or you can choose you have multiple choice questions on it. Uh, I should say before I get into this method that I'm not proud of this. It just happens to work out that way just because of the nature of the questions. Uh, you should probably be using graphing, which we've uh, my class has done many years. I've done it. You could also use substitution. There's plenty of great videos on that. I may make one eventually. And uh, also for elimination, which is another great method to solve systems of equations. However, I should say that I'm aware of the fact that sometimes multiple choice questions are given to you and sometimes you forget how to do a problem due to test anxiety. This method may get you through it. So let's look at one. In this question, it says 3x plus 3y equals negative 30, and negative 3x minus 5y equals 30. Now, of course, you can convert these to slope-intercept form by getting y by itself, and then you could graph them, and then you could uh, find the intersection point. You could also uh, figure out what y is in this one and plug its value in here and solve. You could always use elimination, but that's what not what this video is about. It's about multiple choice answers. Now, math itself is about truth, right? This is an equal sign. It means what I get on this side has to equal this side. If I have multiple choice answers, all I have to do is find scenarios in which I can plug in x and y and get this number. So I'm going to do, for the top one, I'm going to make a parenthesis where x and y are, and then I'm just going to plug in a variety of uh, choices. So if, like for a is 4. So on this one, I would do 3 times 4 plus 3 times 0 equals negative 30. Now I can do this because x is 4 and y is 0. Now if this side equals this side, I'm done. So I'm going to check. See how it gives you 12? It doesn't give you, sorry I got a glare, it gives you 12. It's supposed to give you negative 30. So this cannot be the answer as long as you plug it in correctly. Make sure you're using the parentheses because if you don't, if it's a negative you can get a disaster. Especially if you have something like negative x. If you have negative x and the number you're plugging in is negative 3 and you write down negative 3, you're doomed. You should write down negative, negative 3, which is positive 3. Now let's try this one. 3 and my x here is 3 plus 3 and my y here is 4. So I would do 3 parentheses 3 plus 3 parentheses 4 and it gives me 21. That's not what it's supposed to give me so this one is not the answer. I'm going to go to D because I'm right on top of it. 3 negative 10 plus 3 0 equals so 3 parentheses negative 10 plus 3 parentheses 0, negative 30. Well, that's what it says right here. So this looks like a possible answer. You have to try both. So negative 3 parentheses, negative 10, minus 5 parentheses, 0. Negative 3 parentheses, negative 10, minus 5 parentheses 0 and it gives you 30. This looks suspiciously like this and they have the same numbers as answers. So this is your answer to the question. Now that works as long as you have multiple choice. I am going to offer a couple examples of when it doesn't work as well but it still works. So if you just lose your mind, plug in the x where x goes, plug in the y where y goes, and try to see if you can get one side to equal the other. If it does, that's likely the answer. Like I said, there's no pride in this method. It just happens to work. So we look at this one. By the way, you may have noticed a glitch from the camera kicked off on me. Sorry about that. Now, in this one, I had already started uh, filming this section where I was plugging it in and I ended up getting, let's see, negative 10, parentheses, negative 7, minus 8, and it gives me 1, so it gives me 62, which is not what it's supposed to give me, so this is probably not the answer. Now, strangely, I'm not going to go through them all because this video lasts forever. If I go through, this one doesn't work, and neither does this one. So my only choice would be infinite number of solutions. Now let's think of the possibility of that answer. I could have gotten that without doing anything. Look at the two forms. They're exactly the same. 
this says exactly the same thing as this. So no matter what you plug in for x, you're going to get a y that's going to make this work. It just happens to be that none of these work. It just means that these points are not on the line, but what you end up with uh, is a line that sort of, I'm trying to think of what it might look like, probably starts here and goes down, so probably something like that. So um, if you get them where none of them work, it's probably the infinite number of solutions thing, or it could potentially be no solution. And we're going to look at um, how to decide which one it is in the next problem. So we have this problem. So what I'm going to do is try to plug these in first and see if that works. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to take a look at what's available to me. So I'm going to try doing the 4 parentheses negative 9 plus 2 parentheses 1. 4 parentheses negative 9 plus 2 parentheses 1. I hit enter, and it gives me negative 34. But it's supposed to give me negative 4. That's not right. So this one can't be the answer. Let's try it down here. So this one would be 4 parentheses 1 plus 2 parentheses negative 9. I type all that in and it gives me negative 14. But it's not supposed to give me negative 14. It's supposed to give me negative 4. So I know this isn't it either. So now what I have to do is make a comparison statement to see if they're the same line, which would indicate that it's this one, or that they are uh, parallel, which would mean it's this one. So in order to do this, I do kind of have to go back in and take a look at what that um, uh, slope's going to be. So what I'm going to do is move uh, is set y by itself. I'm going to take this one. Then I'm just going to draw the line. I'm going to get y by itself by subtracting 4x. 2y is equal to negative 4x minus 4. I don't know why I wrote plus there. It's getting late in the day. Divided by 2. y equals negative 2x minus 2. Now on the other one, I'm going to write minus 4x minus 2y equals 8. Draw the line, add 4x to both sides. That's an important point here. I'm going to end up with negative 2y equals 4x plus 8. And I'm going to write this over here really fast. Sorry, I ran out of room. Divide by negative 2 everywhere. Negative 2x minus 4. Now, look at this, and then look at this. You will notice that their y-intercepts are not the same, but their slopes absolutely are the same, which means they are parallel, and you get no solution. If you want to graph them to see that they're parallel, just go back into the um, graphing section and type in negative 2x minus 4 and negative 2x minus 2. Graph them. And as you can see, they are parallel. So if you get one that's weird like that, that none of them work, uh, try moving it around to see if it's going to give you one line or if the graph gives you two lines, which would be no solution. So good luck on these. It shouldn't be all that complicated to get these right. Just take your time, plug things in, make sure you don't drop negatives, and you'll be totally fine.